Yeah. Okay, two, I'd like to introduce two, two, Mandy two. from the UK. Hi, um, I'm a medical student here in London, and what I wanted to discuss was something that's not considered sexy um, to do with health systems, so it doesn't get much coverage, um, and that's perverse subsidisation. Basically, in the United Kingdom, it costs £250,000 per medical student to train um, them to become doctors. And that is mostly uh, paid for from taxation. Uh, we have a situation where doctors and nurses, other health workers, come from, the, come from developing countries to this country. And um, we here obviously gain um, financially by not having to train them. But the health systems there are severely affected because this money is not reimbursed to them. So in this country, for example, there is um, a doctor for every 470 people. In somewhere like Ethiopia, there are 1,600 doctors for 80 million people, and only 800 of those work um, in their public health system. Um, in addition, there's beheading of the health services, where the most qualified doctors who are, become consultants in this country um, leave countries such as Ghana, India, Pakistan, Nigeria, Jamaica, wherever it may be, um, and that significantly impacts on the training that can then be carried out in those countries. So um, not only in numbers are the, um, are there, is the health system affected, but also in the skills. We need you to speed and, up because others aren't going to get to speak. Um, and so I just want to say that I feel that we in um, developed countries should be demanding that our governments uh, pay the debt that we owe to the developing countries to reimburse, so to improve the health systems abroad. Now, imagine what you're going to say is a tweet, and it's only 140 characters. So, Zoya, if you'd like to introduce the... Yes, um, we have a young man here, Nargi, from Mongolia. Okay, thank you so much for the opportunity. And, uh, okay, we talked a lot, a lot of problems, you know, in, in terms of health and and in terms of uh, a lot of problems in developing countries, right? But and what's the solution? And okay, if you look at, okay, let's look at Kenya and versus the United States. Okay, agriculture, that's maybe more than 30% of the GDP. And in the US, it's maybe more than less than 4%. But did, did you know that, you know, in, in the US, there is a, like, you know, it's very unfairly competitive. And it, U.S. has a huge, and the U.S. and the European Union, they have a huge agricultural protectionism. And uh, uh, actually, okay, if, if we are able to increase the income of developing countries, and we actually, we, okay, global health issues solved, and uh, a lot of problems can be solved. But unfortunately, because of agricultural protectionism, actually, that's one of the main causes. Uh, uh, sorry, a little bit nervous. Uh, because of the agricultural protectionism, you know, that, that actually is, uh, sums up 30% of the GDP uh, in Kenya versus 4% of uh, the U.S. But agricultural protectionism, it's actually, okay, I believe... Your 140 an characters are now up. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. As an, economics, as an economics student, I believe we're in win-win situation. But actually, as a result of agricultural protectionism, the U.S., Kenya, they're all worse off, actually. Okay. And everybody knows it. And then I actually call upon and uh, grown-ups, they fail to eradicate agricultural protectionism, even though it, like, you know, nobody benefits out of it. And I call upon eradic eradication of agricultural protectionism. That right. can solve a lot of problems. Thank you. Are we going to the back of the... Where are we going now? Hello, everyone. My name is Kaidi from Nigeria. Sadly, there's no one to introduce me, so I'll do it myself. <laughs> anyway, um, I think everyone has spoken very well, but uh, there's something I like to say. I like to look at things at a very practical level. I like to look at th have a very practical approach to things. We've all come up with theories. As far as I'm concerned, the government approach, business approach to solving this health issue. But what about the One Young World or society's approach? Now, I want to ask a question to drive home my point. How many of you are guilty of seeing, of actually dropping dirt, you know, outside your car? Just raise your hand. Or um, please raise your hand, no lies, future leaders. Or 
How many of you are guilty of urinating, you know, in public places where you're not supposed to? <laughs> or... Don't you seem to be an anonymous poll? <laughs> nobody seems to want to be honest about things, but I know you all know the truth within yourself. So my point here is, I'm, I saw, uh, as part of the action plans for, you know, uh, MDG action plans, I have committing to look after your own health first. And I think every one of us should have that at the center of whatever we're, you know, whatever action plans we're going to um, bring up. Because I think, I think it's important that we talk about all these things, but go back home, take it back, take, take whatever it is back and say, if the government, while the government is trying to, you know, resolve all these issues on a high level, your own personal, uh, or your personal position should be to have a practical approach, do something, Heidi, roll your sleeves Heidi, and do something. your point is well is. made. Thank you. Thank okay. you. Speakers, speakers at the mics, we are so out of time. You've got to stick to it, okay? Be quick, please. from Argentina. Okay, I'm just gonna read something I just scribbled while listening to the speakers. Following, following the idea of education and prevention in lucid speech, great speech by the way, um, the challenge of tackling the problem with our global agenda is, as mo most times turns out to be, how to actually get it done. We've addressed governments, hospitals, international and international aid organizations, but not enterprises social responsible enterprises. Besides pharmaceutical enterprises, construction and food enterprises have done something to help as well. For instance, the synergy company Grameen Danone, of which we have already heard of, has prevented many children from getting sick with yogurt and its micronutrients. Also, in the construction field, enterprises have worked with many local communities in order to provide a potable water pipe system. It is governments, but foremost we, that need to encourage and compel enterprises to take greater initiative and participation in global agenda issues. Thank you. Thank Thanks, you. Laura. <laughs> 20 seconds each, three more comments, let's go. Okay, now 20 seconds from David from Mexico. Hi, brief mix of media, politics, and of course, the current topic, healthcare. Some countries like ours have stand up and have taken proactive actions against drug cartels. President Calderon Mexico's one of key priorities. Besides bringing security and safety to society, this will also reduce a lot of health issues generated by drug themselves. The media side of the story is that some have framed Mexico because of this as a war zone and has definitely impacted our tourism, our second largest income source. I live there and trust me, it's safe to go. And I promise you all that our people, a rich Hispanic culture, will embrace you. Thank you. Well done. Close the online vote. We Close have Catherine online. from China. Um, hello. I would like to address the issue of the technology innovation in the healthcare sector. I believe in, in the developing world, we need to have more productive and efficient healthcare. Especially, I believe the telehealth care, like uh, say telecare in the future trade. So I in, um, encourage international cooperation for, interna in, in, um, for the developed uh, world to transfer the technology innovation to the developing world. And also uh, the, the delegate besides me wants to address the issue of uh, cheap, affordable and accessible uh, healthcare in the rural area, like mobile hospital, mo mobile care. Actually, it's more mobile doctors and nurses who like, will go to the rural areas and teach people how to take care of themselves. That was clever, very clever. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we, we're here with Anne and then Gerardo, we come to you last. We'll go here and you'll, you'll end up. So, Mobato Mokabedi from Botswana. Hi, everybody. Ladies and gentlemen, the common notion. Teach a man how to fish but don't even like fish for him. 
What I'm trying to say is, ladies and gentlemen, I'm from a country of flora and fauna. To give you an example, Africa has been told that it's a country whereby we're being hard hit by diseases and everything. But my country has been fighting left, right, and center to make sure that they eradicate HIV and AIDS. Through what? They have made sure that they provide free ARVs to everybody that is infected with HIV and AIDS. They have implemented programs that is prevention of mother-to-child transmission, which has shown positive change in terms of saving the inborn generation that is, has to be free of HIV and AIDS. But now going into the context of the African voice, we can preach and say, yes, nutrition is important, healthcare is important. But ladies and gentlemen, do, be, do believe that it can be something attainable if we say it to a man who cannot afford a meal, a nutritious meal in a day. A man who doesn't know even a single drop of clean water. Ladies and gentlemen, I think this is high time whereby my African brothers and my African sisters, we go back. These multinational companies flocked in our country, in Africa, that we have been told that we have got resources, and yet we are talking about poverty. Africa is impoverished. What are they doing? As a public relations student, I would like to say, we have to go and scrutinize their social, their corporate responsibility. That yeah. is to make sure that they do their work. Ladies and gentlemen, Thank you. all we can say, but to me, I feel better when you talk about it. It's like you are saying to a man, like a blind man saying like, go and enjoy the beauty of nature. How can a blind man enjoy the beauty of nature? Therefore, ladies and gentlemen, thanks to one young one, uh, it's like to me, I've been given that step to say, there is a mother with wide open arms to say, crawl forward and stand up. I'm here for you. Final comment, one last comment. Okay. Uh... Okay, okay, we're closing with Gerardo. Councillors could come back to the, to the stage. Go, go, go. I'm trying Thank to work you. out what they're saying to me. <laughs> well, only one, two tweets. Uh, the first one will be that it was not mentioned. The global health is discrimination. Please, people, don't discriminate uh, persons that suffer disabilities, BH, uh, uh, malaria, tuberculosis. Discrimination is a big issue in the health. And the second tweet will be uh, to all of those that are studying medicine, nursing, or you are volunteers. For, the, for issues from health, guys, this is the best activity that you can do to save and to help our world. Thank you. Thanks, Thank Gerardo. You. Okay, we're going to read one tweet. Thanks. Some of you um, may have seen it on the screen. I know some of you kind of raised your hands and went, yeah, in response to my colleague from somewhere in Africa, I didn't realize where you were from, the tweet said, link health resolution to climate call for prevention through free integrated education and measurable action to mitigate effects now. And I think that hopefully answers what you said. Thank you.